We're Lisa and Josh, and if this is your first time joining us, we've recently left on a round the world trip that we've been trying to take forever. And after spending the last couple of weeks traveling through Munich, Budapest, and now Prague, we're spending our time getting ready to walk the Camino de Santiago, a 500 mile walk across Northern Spain. Today's our last day in Prague, so we're trying to spend as much time as we can seeing all the amazing sights and all the unique, incredible history here. If you wanna see more content like this, please hit the like and subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to us. You know, it's hard to explain, but I think that we've been experiencing three different Prague since we've been here. The first of which is the Old Town, New Town area, and that's kind of where all the big tourist attractions are. And that's been crazy busy. That's just been full of people all day, every day. But it kind of feels like a museum. It just feels like the area is there just to look at, but then I'm not sure that anybody actually lives there. And the second of which is the area that I'm in right now, kind of between that downtown area and the main train station. And this area is absolutely beautiful, but there's nobody here. And when I say nobody, I mean nobody. I don't feel like there's anybody living in any of the apartments up there, and there's definitely nobody walking around on the streets. And then the third Prague that we've experienced is the one kind of out on the fringes. There seems to be a lot of life in this area, but it feels very different than the museum sort of quality of the main downtown tourist area. And after spending the past couple days visiting quiet Prague and fringe Prague, today we're gonna go visit the main tourist area. Lisa's back at the hotel putting the finishing touches on a video that we're gonna be releasing today. And I have to figure out how in the world that we're gonna get to Paris tomorrow from here. We're gonna try to make this train trip in one day and at a minimum it's gonna take 12 hours but literally every single website that I look at trying to figure out this train route, all of them tell me entirely different routes. So I gotta walk all the way to the train station and figure out how to actually do this thing. I am trying to get to Paris tomorrow. The problem is that we don't sell tickets to Paris, just to Germany and from there you must buy it. But if you wanna buy all the way, you can do it in the corner because there is the Deutsche Bahn office. I just need to figure out the route of how to get to Paris tomorrow. I'm afraid that if you have your L, you have to reserve. Okay. It means it's better go there. Could you print me that 543 one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, great. And then I'll just need to make the reservation for just this last the one. The last right? one you have to reserve, and you can do it in the corner. And I think I need to make some reservations. Okay, Hi. so I got good news and bad news. Which one do you want first? Bad news. Okay, so the bad news is that uh, we got to get up at about 4.30 in the morning to make it to the train station by about 5.45, 5.30. Okay. And the other bad news is that we can't make a reservation for the next train, like the one that gets us actually into Paris, until we get to Germany and we can't do it online. Okay, that's fine, okay. <laughs> So the good news is that we can actually make it to Paris tomorrow. Yay. When do we get to Paris? Uh, same time as before, 6.15 or something like that. Oh, so it's a longer train ride? Yeah, yeah, but we don't have to change trains as much. Wow, okay, well we have a lot to see and do today, and we have to go to bed early. <laughs> also definitely that, which won't be that different from what we do normally since we're old and lame. No, we're not. <laughs> She's not happy. Is the video coming? Exporting. Here's the paper. <laughs> Ready. This time I feel like I'm prepared because I get to see the menu and I don't have to eat in seven minutes. Yeah. Uh, 17, the peasant style bark. <laughs> and the um, mashed potatoes, please. Mushroom sauce, tomato sauce. Uh, mushroom sauce, please. Okay. Yes. It's a number 64. Um, a beef dish with vegetable cream sauce and dumplings, which I thought was bread. But they told me this is what you usually eat with it. So, yeah. 
And I got the peasant style pork with mushroom sauce, which just looks like a big kind of pork chop thing with this delicious sauce on top and a big old helping of mashed potatoes. It's definitely served like cafeteria food, and I think that's just because of the pure quantity of people that come in and out of here every day. Just from the moment that we got in line, another 60 or 70 people got in line right behind us. And there's only limited seating, so you're just kind of like eating as fast as you can. The food is always delicious, even though it's definitely in a sort of fast food, move real fast environment. So even though they're not closing anytime soon, it still felt like we had to eat really fast because there's just a lot of hustle and bustle going on. I think we finished in like five minutes. So this is where everybody is. So we were wandering the streets of Prague to get to Prague Castle and then we happened upon a pond. We happened upon a pond. We, we saw a pond and it was really pretty and so we kept walking and found this beautiful gardens. We ended up in Wallenstein Palace, which was built in the 1600s to rival the Prague Castle actually, which you can see right there. Turns out it's still in its shadow, but now it currently houses the Senate of the Czech Republic and it's completely free to wander around. wall creeps me out. I don't know what it is about it. I think I'm seeing faces in every inch of it, but ugh. Yeah, it's got that tripophobia feel. The stripstone wall, as they call it, just is really, really strange in contrast to the beautiful gardens that exist here. Apparently the architect that built it wanted it to look that way. He wanted this place to be a secret garden almost and the walls with secret crevices. He did it. Mm. I'm not sure if any of you can relate, but <laughs> this is triggering all the trypophobia in me. If you haven't heard about trypophobia, look it up, but don't Google image it. so peaceful and green and there's so much to look at and maybe has the best view of Prague. Now we're going up some stairs because everyone else is and I'm not sure why or where it leads us. Do you know? We're here at Prague Castle, which, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, is the largest ancient castle in the world. But to be honest, I'm not sure how good of a judge 
the Guinness Book of World Records are about the biggest castles anywhere. So I think we can say for sure though that it is a really big castle. This is just the cathedral, but the castle grounds are massive. This castle was the seat of power for Bohemian kings, the Holy Roman emperors, and Czech presidents. It's said that the Bohemian crown jewels are hidden somewhere inside of there. In 1939, right after Nazi Germany forced the Czech president at the time to hand over his country to the Germans, Adolf Hitler spent a night in this castle. It's documented that he said that he was proudly surveying his new possession as he spent the night here, basically looking over all of Prague and saying, look at all this stuff that's now mine. What a scumbag. Later on, he handed over possession of this castle to one of his right-hand men. According to a rumor, he put the Bohemian crown on his head, and the way the legends tell it is that any usurper or anybody who doesn't deserve the crown and wears it is destined to die within the next year. Less than a year after putting this crown on his head, he was ambushed in battle and then died of his wounds. And it says not only that you will die after putting on the crown within a year, but your firstborn son also will. And this ended up coming true. Prague is often known as a city of a hundred spires because chances are if you're looking at the skyline or just looking up at the many churches and the many towers, you'll see lots and lots of spires. But the estimation of actual spires in the city of Prague is actually 500 to 1,000. That's all. being where we got the extra kick to get ready for the Camino. Just that. We're almost ready. I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified. So we're here at Hatulska Dedek restaurant and these french fries are the best we've had in Europe so far by a long shot. So if you're a bit of a french fry obsessive like I am, I'm on this ever going quest, this search for the greatest french fry in the world. And this channel has a long, long history of rating french fries. These are the best french fries that I've had on the island so far. And for all of you that know me, you know that I'm a bit of a stickler for a good french fry. These are damn good. Lisa could not resist the siren song of the funnel cake. It does smell super, super good. Our last time. Here we go. Just really good. This time just ice cream. Also look how big it is. to the Prague, Say, Budapest. So we were wandering through. Sorry. And then we happened upon this really amazing, what is it, a pond? Was it a pond? It happened upon. Yeah. No, a pond. Was it a pond? <laughs> it was a pond. We happened upon a pond. <laughs> okay, pause real quick. <laughs> it's hard to pause. say. Which was built in the 1600s. <laughs> I can't take you seriously. <laughs> when you do I'm, I'm hard at work right now. It used to be a... Uh, it was built as a private residence for an imperial... It, it was built as an imperial... It was built as an imperial palace for... as a private residence. This is so cheesy! Ready? Yeah. You ready? I mean, yeah. I don't know if any of you... <laughs> this is just the... Bleh. It's very high. <laughs> So, let's just stop saying that word. We're sitting here at St. Vitus. We're sitting here at St. Vitus Cathedral. Is it Vitus or Vitus? We're sitting here at St. Vitus or St. Vitus. Probably St. Vitus. Spotted in Prague, 
Aloha Bar. Hi, kitty. What do you got to tell us? So many things to say.